friends. Welcome back to Not Again, the podcast that brings college-level analysis to preschool-level content. I'm one of your hosts, Rebecca. I'm your other host, Alan. And today, we are talking positivity. Uh, We are going to talk about two shows because there's not a lot to say when we like something, so we have to talk about two things because otherwise we wouldn't fill more than 10 minutes. We are going to talk about Number Blocks, and we're going to talk about Puffin Rock. Both of these are shows that we recommend. I'll say that right off the top. There's no reason to hide that. We are going to save the rating car universes for maybe next time or the time after. I have to create a rubric and decide if we want to do golf rules and if we want to do uh, like specific categories numbered or if we just want to be like this category, one of 10, what do you want to say? Uh, which is something that The Worst Song on Earth does, one of my favorite podcasts. You should listen to it. So instead, we're just going to we're gonna mellow out. Yeah. This is going to be a nice, calm AMSR. What is it? <laughs> Video ASMR. It sure. stands for All Sounds Make Ready. It does not. It at does all. not. That okay. Was, that was an improv on my part. I'm gonna do an NPR thing. Like today, we're talking about <laughs> today. On wait, rock. wait, don't tell me. Yeah. The world is terrible, Very but we're calm. saying it in a calm voice, like yeah. an airline pilot readying you You're for You're driving crash. to work. Don't fall asleep. So, uh, folks, we're. <laughs> Passing over Puffin Rock, which is apparently a real place. Apparently a real place. It's not called Puffin Rock. It's called Puffin Island, and it's off, like, the southwest-ish corner of Ireland, which is cool. I looked it up on Wikipedia. (laughs) I don't know geography. I didn't even know that. Did we even introduce that that's what we're talking about? Yes, we did. You just don't ever listen to me. I don't. That's That's total projection on my part. I never listen to you. Every time I edit. You never listen to you. Yes, that's true. I never listen to anybody. Every time I edit this podcast, and this is this is the the truth. I was going to say the God's honest truth. Can I say God? Sure. Why sure. not? This is the God's honest truth. Every time I edit this podcast, I hear Alan say something that I didn't know he said, even though we record right next to each other. And I think it's, I don't know, I get so in the zone or something or so focused on the thing I want to say next that I miss something you say. And I, I laugh every time because you're quite a funny person. I hope so. <laughs> um, but no, we're, I don't know if you have a preference, Puffin Rock or Number Blocks to I start think, with. I think we start with Puffin Rock. Start with Puffin Rock? Yeah. So for those who don't know, Puffin Rock is a show about puffins. It is an Irish show that first aired on a network that I can't pronounce in Ireland, but it has since made it to Nick Jr. and other networks as well. We found it on Netflix. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. I believe it's still streaming on Netflix. Hopefully, yeah. And it is adorable. So I'm going to read some information about it from Wikipedia. There's not much of a summary. The summary is that there is a, a, a an island, a rocky cliff-laden island that has lots of wildlife and its own little ecosystem. And the main character is a puffin child named Una. And Una has a little brother named Baba, who is a white puffball. They have their parents, uh, Mama Puffin and Papa Puffin, because, again, parents never have names. <laughs> it's not like it's Steve and jo- Josephine. Like, it's just... Well, yeah, that goes back to Kelvin and Hobbes. Like, they didn't have names. They did, Yeah, all the way back to... Yeah, so... Or before, I assume. Cow and Chicken, which was a terrible show, their parents didn't even have upper halves of their bodies. So... Well, and and, and uh, Charlie Brown, all the adults yes, were just... Wah, 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 wah. A trumpet, I believe. Um, so, it's just Mama and Papa. But there are other characters, including Mossy, who is Una's best friend in a brown Eurasian pygmy shrew. Mossy is probably, I love Mossy, and technically Mossy is true to life in that he is constantly thinking about, like, finding and storing and eating food. And at the same time, it does fall a little bit into that kind of fat shaming. Yeah, it gets a little samey. Yeah, stereotype. And I don't like that, but it's still so cute that I can barely, you know. There's May, who is a rabbit who lives in a burrow. That's where rabbits live. There's Silky. The seal, right? Wow, you remember that better than I do. I honestly forgot who Silky was. Oh, well, then, no, they have a very cute episode about uh, Silky and and, uh, Una meeting an octopus. A gray-colored seal pup. Is Silky the one who found a clam and was like, this is my special clam? And then they saw a thousand clams and they were like, Silky. (laughs) Which one? (laughs) Which one is your special clam? (laughs) Yes, that's the one. But then it turned out to be a special clam because it buried itself under the sand. (laughs) So they were trying so hard to be nice. So they were like, oh, Silky, I'm sure this clam is very special. No, it really was special. There's Otto, who's a green owl, uh, who normally appears slightly uncoordinated. And Bernie. Oh, yeah, the hermit crab. An elderly, an elderly hermit crab. He's got a little beard, doesn't he? Yeah, he's he's wizened. Voiced by Jim Craig. 
as if I know who that is, uh, who enjoys telling tales of his youth <laughs> to Una and Baba. And then let's see, Flynn is a fox. I'm very fascinated by Flynn because fox, the, Flynn is a predator, but also a child. So they have kind of like a bully... Uh, Bully recipient, what victim? There we go. Bully victim relationship. I kind of like bully recipient. <laughs> bullying. Hello, my name is Rebecca. I'll be your bullying recipient today, and um and and yet like sometimes they play together, but like grudgingly, you know, it's it's a it's a strange relationship. Spikey's a baby hedgehog that Baba enjoys playing with. Uh, Chloe is a migrating Arctic tern who visits Puff and Rock during the summer, and so and there's like others. I mean, there's two owl siblings. They only mentioned one here. Uh, which was Otto, but I swear they're Otto. Well, yeah, has a, Otto. I think does one it Otto of, have a sibling or no? One of the plots I think is that they're trying to get Otto's uh, younger siblings to go to sleep. Oh, Otto has younger siblings. That's yeah. right. And there's also an episode where Baba wants to be an owl, but yeah. Puffin suck at owl things. They're like, just turn your head all the way around, Baba. And Baba's He's like, like um... I can't. <laughs> I'm little and uncoordinated. Um, <laughs> also not an owl. Also not an owl. I'm a Puffin. But then, see, this is, I'm going to call this the, 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 I don't know, the Beauty and the Beast reading moments. They're like, oh no, I'm just a Puffin. I'm not as good as an owl but then one of the owls falls in the water and owls can't swim. Yeah. So it takes a puffin to save the owl and they learn a lesson. Turn into your strengths. I feel like we just learned this lesson. We did. We who, did who, just... Who, who, who taught us this lesson that you have to uh, be Rogi, happy? Rogi the bus. Rogi the bus taught us you have to he, be happy. He taught that uh, uh, he was good at being a bus and not very good at being a fire truck, even though fire trucks are awesome. But oh. when it turns out... No, there was a different thing, though, that we learned. Like We actually talked about it recently, but I think you're right that it was Tayo. Hold on. Somebody taught us that... Even though you can't be other things. Oh, this is going to kill me. I, I swear I'm on the right track. Well, you are on the right track, but we didn't talk about Rogi being a fire truck. But he did well, try. Well, no, well, at well, one point, At the tried. demonstration, all the kids. Oh, oh, that was it. That was it. All the kids loved the fire truck. But when the, when, it, when the rain came, you couldn't all pile into the fire truck. There wasn't enough room. Obviously, you needed a bus. my confusion was that it wasn't Rogi. It was Ghani. Oh. How could you get them confused? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't even keep a straight face. <laughs> I'm lying about being incensed, and I can't even. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's. I it. often confuse colored buses. Yes. Yeah, so that was in our in our in our sentient car universe episode. We yeah. will talk about this a lot. Yes. So it's it's the red bus who did this, not the green bus. Um. But yes. Yeah, so we learned the same lesson, which is you just gotta turn into your own strengths and realize that you're special and blah 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 blah. So that was a good episode. Um. There are also seagulls on Puffin Rock. They're kind of like the main antagonists. What's interesting about this show is it's ecologically correct, <laughs> which means that it is actually educational. So yes. even, even if it's a little gross to talk about, our, our narrator, Chris O'Dowd, who is a- Who has a lovely voice. Has a lovely voice and is also, I think, a famous actor. I mean, he was in the IT crowd at the very least. He's famous enough that we have heard of him, even though we are um, tragically American. Ign ignorant, tragic Americans, yes. Um, he's the narrator and we'll talk about the narrator's interaction with the show, but he like tells the audience what's going on. And so for instance, to protect their nests, seagulls will defecate on intruders and it's gross, but that's the truth. And nature's gross sometimes. So the narrator just informs us that that's what's happening. They throw rocks and they defecate and it's like, okay, you know, and I, do, I it's not a poop joke. It's literally what happens in nature. Yeah. And so it is educational yeah. in a very calm and soothing ASMR way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm never going to get that acronym right. I'm going to be like MCWR. Th so there was this thing in uh, the school that I used to work at, by the way, uh, just for everyone to know, uh, I got an email yesterday from a student asking how to do an assignment. And the last day of school was Thursday. So, oh, excuse me. So uh, I got an email on Friday, which is yesterday at time of recording, about how to do an assignment, and the last day of school was Thursday. And I still don't know if I should respond to this email. But at the school I used to work at, there were little common areas where students could just like sit and hang out or do work or whatever. And for some reason, they were called FTLAs. 
And that was stupid. And I didn't know why they weren't just called like study areas. And so every time I said it to my students, I was like, you can go out and work in the PXQG. And they knew exactly what I was talking about. So you do that anytime with ASMR. Okay, go that's good. Anyway, it is, a, it is a very calm and soothing show, but it's, it's, it's passively educational. So if we look at our, our spectrum, it's not on the Peppa Pig side, but I would say it's almost towards the center somewhere. Yeah, well, this is, this is, we've talked about. Uh... Although it still has lessons like be yourself, so. Not- We've talked about this because it's like there there are shows that are brightly colored and about just fluff and selling toys, and they'll try and sh- shoehorn in some sort of lesson right. to claim education. Right, education washing, uh, the yes, term you th- came up with. This is a thing we came up with. I believe that this term was introduced by Alan in our Super Wings episodes, yeah. if you would like to listen yeah. to us talk about that. And I stole it from greenwashing. We're like, it's ecological. You and adapted it, dear. Yeah. And, uh, but this really talks about animals and really talks about what they're about. Yeah. And I mean, sure, they don't show the fox, like, attacking a puffin and eating it in a bloody bit, but, like. But it's, it's, it's much closer to a nature documentary than someone saying, did you know that foxes are a half meter in length? On to the bus show. Yeah. Or, or, like, at the end, if, uh. So here's a good example. So there is an episode where Una, the main character Puffin, goes swimming and she gets caught in some garbage, some litter, right, that had fallen into the ocean or rather probably had gotten there through, you know, it was through human beings means that that garbage ended up in the ocean and she got caught up in it like an old fishing net and, you know, stuff like that. And her parents had to set her free. But after they did that, they didn't go... Like, Una didn't go like, father, mother, why did this happen to me? And her parents didn't go, well, I was about to say, well, son, just because I guess that's like the common. <laughs> that, that, that's the thing. <laughs> well, daughter, it's because human beings litter, and like Captain Planet style. Like, don't forget, like, turn to the camera and be like, don't forget, kids, littering is bad. <laughs> like, they don't do that. They let you see the effects right. of it, litter. It, 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 it's, it, it's showing, not telling, yeah. which we talk about a lot on this show. Absolutely. And so I don't know why I did a British accent since it's supposed to be Irish, but well, you know, I don't want to Because we're not good at it. I don't want to offend all our Irish listeners, but. You know, that's that's the kind of education it is. So it's real. It's not explicit like Bluey is, where it's like, Bluey, here's the lesson I want you to learn today. Again, I love Bluey, and Bluey does a certain purpose, right? You know, educational television with a message for that kids yeah. can understand. But Puff and Rock does it a little more subtly. So I would say it's on the right side of the spectrum near Daniel Tiger, but very close to the center as okay. well. Because it does have the occasional lesson, but it's 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 implicit. It's shown, not told, and I think that that's fine. I think, yeah, I think it's it's honestly more fun and better. I think, I think we like that yeah. kind of style. I think there's a use for every t- type of show on the spectrum. Well, right? yes, there's a Peppa Pig use, and unfortunately, I guess there's a Daniel Tiger use, even if it's just to sell toys. But I like this central kind of slightly skewed and, right. And Sesame show. Street can just say the number of the day is eleven. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like Sesame- learn about eleven Sesame- today. Sesame Street is definitely on the. Uh, right side of the spectrum with Daniel Tiger, but I like Sesame Street, so. Yeah. So, yeah, and then uh, there's an episode where Bernie, the old hermit crab, wants to get a lady friend. I remember that, and he's trying to find her a shell to move into because hermit crabs change shells, and that's how you learn that, right? But the narrator, so Chris O'Dowd, by the way, I rewatched the IT crowd recently, and I was just so sad, and I learned some very, some things about the creator that made sense, (laughs) given how horrible that show was yeah there were some there were some bad apps it was so funny in the first few episodes like richard iode being like well, I'm just yeah this- he's just well he's just naturally charismatic but like, he's like i'm gonna put this fire over with the other fire like yeah. ah, but then they started making fun of disabled people and trans people and i was like it's like no uh, how did this get past like i have an idea but it did because the owner the owner the creator was a horrible person anyway yeah. chris o'dowd is the narrator and he he narrates and sometimes narrators interact i feel like directly with the characters and sometimes they're just like telling you what's going on like with Peppa like daddy pig just fell out of an airplane but in this it's almost like he's watching the show with you and even though the characters can't hear him he's like no Una don't do that and then there's like one time where Bernie's just like singing to pass the time because his little hut got like he was in a little cave and like it got covered by rocks like he couldn't get out and so he was like trying to just chill you know and 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 the narrator was just like oh how lovely i wonder if he takes requests and it's like but he won't because he can't hear you like why i just find it so funny and then he's like oh no no watch out for that octopus and it's like okay that is adorable i love the i i usually don't like narrators yeah no and and, and especially in kids shows it gets a little 
Well, kids shows aren't distracting. For, yeah, kids yeah. shows aren't for adults. Yeah, let's face it. And so that, I'm sure no, kids, you got me there. So kids don't care about the narrators. But all, all I'm saying is they don't care that it's distracting to me because yeah. it's not for me. Yet Puff and Rock is a show that even without Warren, I would sit down and watch. If I felt like, you know, maybe maybe to have in the background while doing something, well, but it's just right. like, it's a beautiful show. It, 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 they, oh, we haven't talked about the animation at well, all. Well, I want to bring that up because I'm very proud of myself. Okay. So I love The Secret of Kells. If you have not seen that movie, they have created other movies since then. Um, Song of the Sea was okay. <laughs> but The Secret of Kells is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I must say, I wish I could say that the art style alone, What I must say, I wish I could say, ugh, anyway. The art style alone was enough for me to be like, ah, I recognize this. But honestly, it was probably a combination of me loving the art style and also that it's Irish. <laughs> but I was like, wait a minute, beautiful art style watercolor style and Irish and I recognize this is this and I was right so one of the three creators of this show was uh I don't know if he's a creator or director or whatever I forgot to look it up but he worked on, worked the, Secret on the Secret of Kells at all you know the other movies that came out as well Wolf Walkers and Song of the Sea yeah. and I'm so delighted that there's a show now that like exists with that art style it is so gorgeous and I love it um, yes it's very very pretty you can watch The Secret of Kells with the sound off. Yes. And just... It's like a, watching a painting. It, yes. You know, it's... it's just, it, and just... I, I don't know where I was going with that. Like, you watch it with the sound off and just enjoy... Looking at it. Looking at yeah. it as just a visual media. And above that, it's a good movie. Yes. It didn't even have to be. I think it was Oscar nominated. I think it won. I'm Did not it? Sure. I'm not sure. It I was definitely, uh, it's definitely gotten some serious accolades. Yeah. Probably a Pixar thing won that year. Anyway, uh, it it very much could have won. It was definitely nominated. It was a nominee for Best Animated Feature in 2010. 2010. Like it, it deserved to win. It was probably up against Cars 3. But it, and- it won Audience Award... Uh, for other film festivals and stuff. Like, it's been nominated for a lot of awards, obviously. Uh, if it's not on a streaming service, just... It was on Netflix Find once, a way but, yeah. to watch this movie. I would rent this, you know. I, yeah. Go to your local blockbuster. Uh, oh. <laughs> you were right that it was up against Pixar. Oh, I'm, I'm not surprised who, who it won? lost. Who won? I, I, I would still say... Toy Story? I would still, Five? I, I would still say that I would go for The Secret of Kells against this one, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it lost to Up, which, yeah, of course it of was going to lose to Up. Of course it did. Yeah, they, they uh, didn't stand a chance. So Yeah, uh, 25 minutes of that movie were fantastic. Yeah, the first 10 <laughs> minutes alone. Um, so, yeah, so the animation I, is great. It, it's, it's, it's so wonderful. To our one fan, I'd say... We might it might have it might have it might have won against up. Yeah, in my estimation, I think it, it was a better it, I think I could I could get behind if, if it won over up, I'd be like, mm, if yeah. only for being unique. Yeah. I can't tell you it's how It's good. So the Oscars are meaningless as any like film buff will tell you, but like I can't tell you how happy I was when Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse oh, won yeah. against The Incredibles 2. If you want to know my thoughts about The Incredibles 2, simply look for the episode Bex to the sequel Bex to the sequel I provided one time when we couldn't do a regular episode it's supposed to be patrons only and it will be from here on out but yeah I had some thoughts anyway so it, it was nominated it was it, really good it was a really good movie and we can stop gushing about it anytime I suppose but well, this is the gush episode this is the gush episode uh it the episode we've seen the most I would have to say is the froggy, froggy. episode right. uh Warren loves frogs but well we have a couple of different frog videos yep. that he likes to watch. He likes to pretend to be a frog. He likes to. He, I think he learned how to do it in preschool once. Yeah. And from then on, he was like, He's I'm like, a froggy. Well, just, yeah, yeah you know, I want to do some jumping. Yep. Uh, I'm going to be a frog right now. There is a YouTube channel called Tier Zoo. Ooh, T-I-E-R yeah. Zoo. Um, we can do a whole episode on Tier Zoo we if we could, wanted to. We, we've, it's really good. We've been considering doing an episode on the YouTube videos. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, we, Blippi would be its own, but like... Tear zoo and random content to like Masha and the bear and mm-hmm. Poco yo. Cause all those things he sees through YouTube. So we'll probably do that episode, okay. but, but tear zoo, uh, the, the guy provides information about biology yeah. by ranking different animals as if they are play- video game characters, video game characters, player characters in a video game. So yeah. he's like, so you know, the- this goes into stealth and this goes yeah. into, you know, level yeah. up and blah, 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 you know? And, my understanding is that the proprietor of Tier Zoo is a <laughs> biologist. Like, yes. and the the conceit is just for fun. I'm going to talk about you know different 
uh, frog variety. Er, er, herbosaur dinosaurs today, right, yeah. and we're going to put them in a ranking. And they're having fun with it, and there's lots of cool video editing and like uh, graphics and stuff like that. However, it is not kid friendly. The I can't stress this enough. Like Warren doesn't; he's too young to realize what he's looking at. Not it's not blood and gore, but it's well, like occasionally because sometimes animals just get eaten. Yeah. The cookie cutter shark, for instance, is not one that you really want your child yeah. seeing. So don't think we're recommending this for your six-year-old. It's just that Warren doesn't really pay attention to the- And he really you know, only watches the froggy Yeah, video. exactly. He doesn't really pay attention to the details. He just sees a froggy and goes, froggy, you know, like yeah. it's fine. We're not, it, no. it, it, it's not it, worrying. This content. one, it's it's got a fun kind of framing, yeah. but it is a nature documentary. Right. And nature documentaries occasionally have the gazelle getting eaten. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's not like super graphic, but it's not like a, it's not a, a kid's channel, basically. Yeah. Like there are kids YouTube channels. This isn't one of them. Anyway, I don't know what you were going to say. I'm sorry. I think we got there. Yeah. It's, uh, we're 20 minutes into our record. So maybe we should switch over to number blocks. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so that, I mean, like, I don't think we, yes. Oh, the froggy. Yeah. The, the episode premise is just like, there's a frog in Una's cave wherever puffins live and she wants to help the froggy get home so her parents wake up and baba wakes up and they just take the froggy back to the pond and the starry sky i i want a screenshot of that beautiful like tableau and while they're walking una sings a little song about getting the froggy home and it is the most heartwarming and innocent thing you'll ever see and i highly recommend the frog episode which is like season one episode four ish something um i remember because we've seen it so many times but um yeah so great show. Number Blocks is a show that is not education washing, but it's also on the I don't know where it would fall because it's not teaching life lessons. Maybe it like maybe if we have like a Z axis this somewhere. Is, well, uh, maybe we need to get three or four dimensional. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, it's teaching math. It, 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 this is specifically about math. Yeah. So I think the first episode is just about the number one. So each episode's like three minutes long or four yeah, minutes long. They're very yes. short. But – very quickly, it gets, uh, I'd say, reasonably complicated. It does. You get to greater than and less than. Yeah. You get to subtraction uh, and, and addition. And, yep, and different arrangements of kind of numbers. That, like, uh, let's, yeah. Okay. So hold on one second. So the premise is this. Number blocks follows the adventures of, of block characters in Numberland, with the number of blocks determining which numeral they stand for, and a tiny black floating number above them to show how many blocks they are made of, which they call a numberling. When one of the blocks hops on top of another, they transform into a different character to make a new number. And I am going to talk about this. <laughs> so the show helps toddlers and young kids learn numeracy skills, especially how to count, do simple math. Right. This is British. It's a British show. So they say maths. Integer concepts such as even versus odd and factoring are discussed and explored. References to much more sophisticated ideas are also presented visually, usually without comment, such as the Pythagorean theorem and the Fibonacci sequence. It can be recognized by knowledgeable viewers, so probably not three-year-olds. Uh, well, it depends on your three-year-old, I guess. Yeah. So they're British. They do refer to each other as she, which I think is interesting. So again, we're not doing that kind of like patriarchal, yeah. male-centric viewpoint. Like but, they're blocks. I mean. Yeah, they're blocks. I don't know if they need gender at all, but. You know, they don't whatever. They don't reproduce. I mean, most of they, them are multiples. They so combine they be, and just yeah. dissociate. Yes. Well, that's, well. Just, that's it. So, so we meet this little red cube who discovers that it is the number one. And the first episode, it learns it's very lonely. It wishes that it weren't alone. It says, there's only one of me, right? Very sad. But as the episodes progress, we meet another red cube, who is another one. And then the next episode, they combine and become two. So we have two one blocks who consider themselves to be one blocks, who feel that when they say I, they are referring to one. Mm -hmm. And then they combine into a single character who is two, who is a different color, who's a different voice, who's a different appearance, and also refers to herself as I, but that I refers to two, but then two will split back into two ones who have different identities and all i'm saying is i've never encountered a kid's show that makes me feel quite so much existential dread <laughs> as this it's, show. It's, it's a little like we are borg yes. like we are numbers yes. and we will combine and dissociate and recombine in any number of ways and we are and our independent and unique shortly <laughs> our identities are infinite we can be anything and we are all and we are individual but we are also together and like it's 
it's mind boggling to me, but they do it very well. And obviously yes. kids don't care about this. And you know, it's cute. The math is good. I mean, yeah. like as far as teaching math goes, it I I I stand behind it. And I don't know how well it would like I would need to do an experiment where I put a four year old who doesn't know math in front of the TV and then like uh, see after a week if they know math. But you know, they do count. Warren's do. pretty good at sixteen at this point, yeah. and that's not a fun number to learn. Well, he does like repeating after. So he he said twenty today because yeah, well, yeah, well, it, he no, loves twenty. We've been we've been. I mean, we've he been, likes eleven and eighteen a lot. Yes, <laughs> listeners uh, uh, don't need to know this, but we've been playing a game for years and years called 10 where i get him to count to 10 and then he gets tickles yes and uh he's been doing that so well for so long that i've been trying to get that to be 20 yes and he's doing it in preschool and uh what was the cute story his teacher told me his teacher told me that he likes the number 11 so much that he will manufacture situations where he can see the number 11 so for instance if they're walking next to room number 116 he'll go up to the door and cover the six with his hand and go 11 (laughs) so he must really like the number 11. Yes. It may well be his favorite. So Number Blocks doesn't have a plot per se. It's, it's literally every episode adds, quite literally, I'm not, I'm not lying here, to the previous episode. So you get from so from 1 to 100. And then today I remembered, because Warren happened to be watching it, that there's also 0. And 0 is a floating mouth with the number, for lack of better words, zero, directly above it, where the zero kind of acts like a cyclopean eye. So the zero is its number, but it also kind of makes it look like it has a face because it's a mouth and a single eye because the zero is a circle. You know, eyes are circles. And I don't know how I feel about this. The, The fact that we have anthropomorphized nothingness it does not help with my existential dread. There's a little bit of existential dread in this show. <laughs> yeah, so when you watch this show, don't don't do it under the influence of <laughs> anything. I've never been under the influence of anything that might be considered uh, yeah. and drug, but I would be terrified, I think, if I were. So- I bet I bet we haven't talked about the uh we haven't talked about the dad subreddit. But maybe we did. We did in we the did? last, okay. yeah, in the, in the Bluey episode. Uh, of, is it actually r slash dad it? Dad it, okay. yeah. Uh, but like, I can totally imagine somebody going like, "Well, my wife and I, we got some brownies, brownies, <laughs> and number blocks just blew our mind." Yeah, it's uh, but so yeah, so like, well, how does it happen? Like, so you learn addition. They 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 combine and separate a lot so that you can see what one plus one looks like, what two plus three looks like, right? But there's also this monster that has a uh, wide open and angled mouth like Pac-Man. Imagine Pac-Man's mouth. And the mouth is like kind of a thicker black outline so that it looks like the greater than less than sign. And I thought it was, they thought that the monster wanted to eat them. And so they were scared of the monster, but it turned out that the monster wanted to play with them. And so it didn't want to eat them with its greater than, less than mouth. It wanted to like play around with finding out who's less than and who's greater than. So if the one was on the left side of the monster, then it turned its mouth to the three. And then they would say one is greater than, oh, excuse me. I got it wrong, didn't I? I mean, edit this out so I don't sound stupid. Um, One is greater than zero. They would say three is greater than one, you know, and like. And then they would combine three and one to four and be like, ah, now we are four. You and know? then it flips, yeah. yeah. And then this monster turns around, for instance. And so it's cute. And yet it it doesn't, I think here's what I want to say about this show. It doesn't insult kids' intelligence. Yeah, that's a good point. It cause... presumes that kids can understand these concepts. As opposed to saying you're too mm-hmm. young to understand greater yeah. than less than. It's it it goes pretty hard, and I appreciate that. So the first episode is like this one block is one, and then the second episode is like two together make two, but it gets to like one hundred and greater than less than, and and I think a little, and I mean, definitely a, addition and subtraction, addition, but I think a little bit uh, yeah, of multiplication. Like, yeah, really quickly, and well, that's a good thing. The wiki says odds and evens at the very least, so you know. It, it, no, but like it, it gets there, and I appreciate that. And right. if you need to spend more time, just rewatch it. Like it goes, it like it get like it gets up. Uh, yeah, yeah, and the the long ten, and then the ten tens make a hundred. Like it, it, it. 
It, yeah, it's and it serious but, about like, giving you some math. What we have talked about in the past is that people condescend to kids. Oh, that yeah. They, that they decide kids, quote, can't understand blank. And so they don't even, they either try to dumb it down or they don't even try to talk about it. But this show says your kid can understand mm-hmm. math. Yeah. Your kid, your preschooler can understand addition. Your preschooler can understand greater than, less than. Your preschooler can understand odd and even. Your preschooler can count to 100. All that stuff. It says, yes, they can. When you set the bar high, even, you know, it's it's the saying that if you shoot for the moon and miss, you still reach the stars or whatever it is, right? Like you set the bar high enough, even missing that bar is still an achievement because if you get the closest you get to it is still pretty good. And I like that it doesn't condescend. I like that it doesn't dumb the stuff down. It simplifies it. Don't get me wrong. It starts out very simple and and the episodes are short and they use repetition like the one and the one will add and then they'll break apart again to play tennis, you know, and stuff like that. They'll And then they'll add again. And so that you get that repetition. But repetition is necessary for education. That's not dumbing it down. Mm-hmm. It's simplified, but it also says you can learn this. Yeah. And I like that a lot. I'm having a bit of a... I mean, we existential just, crisis. We've been having existential crisis. I wonder how many lessons that they tried to teach me in shows or at school, but it was couched in such a way. And it's like, oh... Yeah, uh, the the silly bear doesn't want to wash his hands. I'm like, well, screw this. Like, I'm not <laughs> paying attention to this. Yeah. And like, I probably did need to get to the end of that where I learned that uh, I don't know. Washing your hands kills germs. Yeah, exactly. Family. But like, it was just like, well, the silly bear wants to go outside. I'm like, ah, get, get out of here. Like, <laughs> get out of here with that. Kids know when they're being talked down to, and I I, I swear they do. Uh, I was rebellious no matter what as a child. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I highly recommend both shows. Like I said, I think the only nitpick I would have about Puff and Rock was that Mossy gets to be a little bit of that kind of quote fat character stereotype, but they explain it as he needs to eat. He hibernates. This is yeah, like, and he's a shrew <laughs> and he's a shrew like animals. They mostly have two or three urges at any given yeah. time. And one of them is to eat because they survive. That's what they do. So I, I like these shows a lot and I don't really have any complaints. And visually uh, Puff and Rock is amazing. Um, and you can you can Google a picture of Puffin Island and it, and it's quite similar. So they did a good job of representing it. Uh, Number Blocks is interestingly like it's inter- it's an interesting visual in its own way. And I was quite surprised that it existed, if that makes sense, because it's just a show with three to five minute episodes about counting. And I was like, hmm, but I like it. I think that for I, what it yeah. does. It does it well. And it is, I'm going to say it's one of those shows on the Daniel Tiger side of the spectrum in that it's it's intended to teach. Yes. Every episode is about... Education. <laughs> a lesson. Yes. Explicitly so. Yes. There is a greater than less than episode. There is, this episode is about the number seven. Yes. And it'll be a little rainbow. But yeah. we do need to start working in four dimensions <laughs> with quadrants and stuff because while it is on the Daniel Tiger spectrum of like... On the side of the spectrum of, like, it teaches a lesson every time. It's also good. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, whereas I don't like Daniel Tiger. And so, like, if we had, like, a negative and a positive quadrant, it would be in the positive quadrant as opposed to Daniel Tiger, yeah. well, which is the I negative mean, quadrant. You can be anywhere on the spectrum and then we can rate you one out of ten. Exactly. So Daniel Tiger is on uh, on the right side of the x-axis, but in the negative side of the y-axis. And number blocks is in the positive side of the y- yeah. y-axis. So, you know, it, it's it's there. And then Puff and Rock, like I said, is towards Daniel Tiger because it does have lessons but it not always like i i don't think that that's a given right they learn about sharing they learn about littering they learn about uh being safe in a snowstorm and you know minding your parents but they don't always have to tell a grown up they they are independent characters which is what i think what your problem was with daniel tiger yes. is they show that preschoolers can't really be independent of the adults in their lives that they have to rely on them for everything uh like regardless of situation there in 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 the daniel tiger universe there is nothing you can do yourself right you know he zips his own jacket good for him and then it's like back to and yeah and then you need your parents for everything but for this like the kids they they go out they explore they have the trust of their parents to know what to do and and that's a good good thing as well but not every episode like the episode with the frog is just like hey let's take this frog home (laughs) yeah and it's not like the the lesson is frogs need to be home yeah the lesson is really cute song i like a lot yeah exactly 
And I've been dying to sing it this whole time. And as soon as the mic goes off, I will, because I don't want to subject anyone to my voice. That's something. We have to talk about Elmo's world at some point. Oh, yeah, we do. Ari likes Elmo's world, but now Warren likes Elmo's world. And he even says Elmo. But the one thing I will say is that Elmo has moved into the 21st century. And he now has a smartphone friend named Smarty who Googles stuff for him. And one episode is about singing. And Smarty's like, this is what singing is. And here's singing from other countries. And then she finishes by saying... And the best part is anyone can sing. And I was like, no, Smarty. No, they can't. I am living proof of that. You really, you, you shouldn't have said that, Smarty, because you are setting yourself up for some major disappointment there. But yeah, so we'll talk about Elmo's world at some point. I think there should be an Elmo's world episode. I think so, too. We have to talk about the wide world of noodles. So <laughs> the what is it? Mr. Rogers' neighborhood is called, it's called the make, land of make-believe. The neighborhood of make-believe. The neighborhood, so we have the neighborhood of make-believe, and then we have the Elmo's neighborhood of noodles. The neighborhood of noodles. The neighborhood of Mr. Noodles. So yeah, um, I don't think we have anything else to say. We've got our full episode length here. I just want to do a couple quick clarifications. In the last episode, Alan made it very clear that you should not get a blue healer unless you have a job for that blue healer. But at one point he says, don't get a blue healer unless you have a job. While I do believe employed people can take good care of animals, he was talking about a job for the dog. Oh yeah, I think I've... He you, said it many, many times and I'm sure... I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence. I might have gotten a little bit cut off. I don't think so. I, but probably, I, just, I think I cut you off a little bit. But I, He yes. meant a job for the dog. And he was just And I don't, I, I, I don't mean uh, let in money or employment. Right. I just mean exercise. Yes. So uh, the other thing is I sorely regret that when I said that bingo has a name, I didn't say bingo has a name O, and I'm oh. sorry. I'm very sorry that I didn't take that off. I, oh, geez. That's like when uh, Adele, what was the episode I did? Adele has that, the, the, the Kung Fu Panda, they were known as the... Fantastics, or what were they called? I don't the know. The Furious Five, right? Okay. And there was this time when they were angry, and so Adele was like, and the Furious Five were very upset, and like we, <laughs> they, they purposely did. <laughs> That's funnier. Did, yes, That's funnier. They, they purposely. No, not purposely. They didn't realize that they'd missed that opportunity. I had to tell them later. Yeah. But they, the fact that they didn't was funnier. So, but I feel like I could have had that opportunity to say Bingo was her name. Oh, you know, but I didn't. No. Oh. But just know, I, I, I thought about it. And now I'm sad. No, that I, I, I think I think we're better without it. Yeah. So anyway, when you get a working dog, make sure you ha- give the dog a job. Yes. And uh, even if the <laughs> dog is destroying frisbees. Yeah. They need a job. They like herding socks, whatever yeah. it may be. Unless they're scared of sheep, in which case you adopt them. You and still you need to cuddle them. Yeah. And, you you know, still need to give, give them exercise. exercise. Yes. There, there are certain. They'll vibrate into the next dimension. Yeah. There are certain dogs that need a lot. Yeah. We're not exactly dog experts by any means, but uh, you know, you can certainly go to Can I Pet Your Dog if you want a podcast all about dogs, dog breeds, dog facts, and just wanting to pet dogs. Uh, that is a great podcast. I love it. And yeah. Go ro- go go watch Puff and Rock and and I don't know maybe Number Blocks. Number Blocks. I mean, if you're listening to the show and you don't have any kids and you want to brush up on your very basic math, like it's not a bad show. Or if you just want to, if you for some reason crave existential dread, <laughs> Number Blocks will do that for you. And I'm not here to judge. Just if that's what eat you need a couple brownies and space out. I'm not encouraging anybody to eat brownies because that's illegal in some states still. And also it freaks me out to even think about. But if that's your thing, number blocks might be an alternative to SpongeBob is all I'm saying. Yes. Um, anyway. And uh, chocolate is... Delicious. Delicious. I've made my feelings about drugs known in the Cars episode, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, the Cars episode and the Secret Life of Pets episode. I don't like either one. Yeah. 21 okay. plus. Thank you for listening. Thank you for existing. Thank you for helping us to maintain our marbles for just one more week, even though our marbles weren't too rattled this time because we like these uh, these shows. But we will come back next time. I think, I mean, we've got so many ideas. I, I'd like to get to the Cars Universe one. We'll see. We also want to talk about Gumby. I want to do at least a couple retrospectives on shows that we liked as kids. I just thought about Hey Arnold today because I saw a GIF and it I just like every now and then I have to sit down and and accept the fact that in the universe of Hey Arnold, they were aware that his head was a weird cartoon shape. (laughs) And then I feel existential dread. Save it. Save it. (laughs) So, yes. So there's there's shows that we watched as kids that I want to talk about. So I kind of want to do this episode on Gumby where we like watch some Gumby and then record our thoughts as we're watching it. But for just for a couple minutes and then we get into talking about it. 
So who knows what we're going to do next week? I've wasted enough of your time. Our commentary track uh, about Frozen 2, and by our, I mean mine, Martin's, and Adele's, is available on Patreon and Buy Me a Coffee if you want to become a Buy Me a Coffee member. Uh, Patreon and Buy Me a Coffee have very separate perks available, so it depends which one you like, but it is available to all tiers of our Patreon, and you can laugh along. And the reason Alan wasn't there was because he was watching the kids while I recorded. Also, I barely remember Frozen 2. Yeah, I don't think Alan really cared to be on that track. I like the salamander. Yeah, I had very strong feelings. So yeah, we have support sites. We of course appreciate five-star ratings and reviews, and we will see you next week. Until then, I'm Rebecca. I'm Alan. Bye, friends. Bye.